me, what's your name? My name is Nelly. Nelly, we just met as I was asking for something and you handed it over and you asked me where I'm from and I said, I'm from Germany. And your reply was? I am from, I was born in Germany too. And we came here with my family when I was just one year old. Like one here year. is Armenia. You went yeah. back to Armenia at yeah, the age we, of one year. Yeah, my parents used to live there for eight years. And when I born there, like it's the place where I born. But my homeland is Armenia. Like I'm Armenian. <laughs> so what's about the speed limit here in Armenia? Yeah, so speed limit in Armenia uh, in city. Uh, 60 maximum 70 there is uh, so I can even drive until 70 yes uh, within a city you sure yes uh, out of city 80 maximum 90 out of city in uh, there is no highways in Armenia but uh, there are small parts they like highway so I cannot drive 120 in Armenia 400 120 no 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 there is no any highways so the, the german uh, lobby uh, yeah, so <laughs> industry for our cars would not be very happy here <laughs> yeah um, but uh, anyway here also we have uh, too many speed cameras so please be careful i will maybe you can say something in armenian in armenian i speak Ask. You speak very good in Armenian, right? Okay. okay, it sounds beautiful, so it must be yeah. something very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you again for your help and service. Please. My name is Armen. And Armen, in which region of this beautiful Armenia are we right now? Uh, we are in Vyazor region and Yeregis village. What else I should tell you? <laughs> it's beautiful here. I just said when I, when I came out, uh -huh. the smell was amazing. It's a smell of flowers, of uh -huh. herbs. Yes, we are in wild nature, so everything here is just wild. And we have a lot of wild animals here. This land is special protected landscape and there are living wild animals, bears, uh, bezoar goats, wolves, foxes, wow. and so on. <laughs> I want to see them all. Okay, tomorrow morning I'll try to find them for you. How big are the bears? They're brown bears, quite big. You're kidding me, this is no, beautiful. No. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's dangerous, you know. Because I've asked, there was there's a big dog, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid of dogs. Yes. And you said, no worries, because he's protecting you. Yeah, and not you, will, you will hear at night, it's barking. So, yeah, all the barking. It's sleeping all day long, mm -hmm. and it's guarding all night long here, because we have a garbage box near the parking, so uh, bears know about it, and they're coming here every night to steal something from the <laughs> garbage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good thing because in my car there's a lot of fruits. Don't worry, they are not coming closer. Right now we will turn the lights on so they are not coming closer to light. Okay. They are they just scared, they want some food, nothing <laughs> else. But if you want I can get it out of the car. No? No no. Okay. No, so what's necessary. what's the name of the dog? Shoal. 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 What does it mean, Shoal? It's the light. Like Hello Mr. Light. Lighty. <laughs> Lighty light. He's really sleepy. Thank you. Yeah, and the, you see the kitten also. Oh, there's a little big. cat. Yes. So they are best friends? Yes, they are. And both of them have uh, babies now. Really? Yeah. I can show you. I love Later to. Later on. Let's it. first it's show a beautiful you place. Hello, all together. <laughs> you know that there are wolves and bears. Yeah. This is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> wow. This is a nice place. So this hotel is made with containers, shipping containers. With real shipping containers. Real shipping containers. So and she's, I was, like, look at this, this is a she, a pair of she. Uh, it's kids. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, there are, Decoration. Uh, we don't have special trails, like special roads for, for skiing, but uh, there are professionals that come in here, tourists, for wild skiing. Okay, so you have snow here in winter? A lot of snow, like one meter snow. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me, why do you have containers here in your hotel? 
Uh, the owner of this hotel is a professional uh, trekking guide. Uh -huh. So he has been in a lot of countries, a lot of places. And so this concept in other countries in Europe. So he uh, tried to build one in Armenia. And he, it succeeds. So we and have this a, is used container, right? Yes, used container. There mm -hmm. could be someone inside. <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize. Someone will open the door now. And then, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay let's run away. <laughs> yeah. So here is it. It's what on is the it? top. It's a fortress from 5th century called Sambata Bert. I can see it. You think so? Yeah. So you, you need to watch from here, uh, just in the middle of these two ah. trees, you can see the wall of the yeah. fortress. Yeah. And I so, can go up there? Uh, you can do hiking or you, can, you need to go by car. There is both options, but you need higher car to get there. So it's already Sunday afternoon and guess what? I guess uh, it should be hot uh, there on the way, so it's better to go by car if you it's want. It's hot and I've not yet seen a bear near a wall. <laughs> there are uh, somewhere in the high places, because as here became hot, so they usually, I think, they eat in evening times looking for food. But uh, I will ask our guy, wait, waiter, he, he lived in this village and he know exactly where the... Uh, goats and bears are so he will so maybe he can show me yeah uh, i'm not sure about the bear but uh, goats i think he will show and a wolf wolf uh, wolves are not here uh, um, in this weather in this season so they usually are living up to the mountains because all the sheep cows are there <laughs> so they know exactly where they are and Tell me, you are such a friendly person and you are mm -hmm. the manager of the hotel. Yes. And yeah. you told me yesterday about the hotel, that it is also a very sustainable hotel where you mm -hmm. just like get energy from above, uh, from sun, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have panel. a solar panels and uh, for uh, water also we have. So we're heating water with sun uh, lights mm -hmm. and uh, the hotel is uh, made uh, with containers shipping mm -hmm. containers so all the second floor mm -hmm. is shipping containers and also in the rooms um, uh, we try to build everything is just hand handmade if you see the beds everything I, here. I checked them out because I did yoga this morning in my room and I could see from from below lying uh -huh. on the floor yes. that they were handicrafted yes everything so the tables in the first floor uh, chairs we boat but <laughs> you can see everything is with wood and iron material metal so we are in a very remote area i found you yesterday by coincidence i called you it was mm -hmm. close to dawn and i asked oh do you have a room free and you were just laughing yes hey go go <laughs> come over yeah, what we kind of guests do you typically have here uh -huh. i mean we are how far away from the capital of armenia mm -hmm. it's one it's and a half one um uh, 140 kilometer far from so the even two capital. hours around two hours a little bit more Uh, so we mainly have guests if it's a season for tourists, we have tourists, if not locals uh, visit us. And uh, now we are in the laundry room. Hello, <laughs> ladies. What's your name? Manya. Oh. Manya. Sonia. Sonia, you're both Armenian, I assume. Uh, Hi. Hi. Yeah. So yes. they are from this area, from this village. Thank you so much. You were also making the breakfast. Asma nakha jash the lake sar kuma sa chev wa ki ot to me no no okay <laughs> thank you what is the best season to come the, to the region uh i think it's uh, hot everywhere of course in armenia right now but uh, nicest season every season have its uh, special you know view and special uh, weather. We have very cold winter, a lot of snow. We have uh, rainy and very green spring and autumn is completely, uh, completely red and yellow. As you see, mm, there's I've a seen some pictures in the internet, amazing. Uh -huh. And I think every season have its special. And the tourists you have here, I mean, I have not yet met a 
German tourists so far? Mm -hmm. What are the typical tourists that come here? Of course, Armenians from abroad. Yes. I made another interview this morning. She was from mm -hmm. the US, from LA. Mm -hmm. So who else is coming here? A lot of Russians or... Right now, Russians, because the border is open with Russians and all May and uh, June, we uh, were full with Russians. But before the virus, uh, mostly we have Uh, guests from German, from French, from from all over the Europe, uh, we had uh, guests, and Russians were maybe just five percent of our guests. So I mean, no. I have to say, your place is really extraordinary because we're really surrounded by nature. I mean, wherever I look, Thank now we are so in the much. backyard of your hotel, as mm -hmm. we just passed the laundry area, and now we are going to see the little doggies. Okay. <laughs> um, so, another question for you. Yes. As open as you are, I mean, here it's really nature. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. You can say there is nothing. I mean, yes. of course, there is a lot because nature is full of richness. Mm -hmm. But still, like urbanization, mm -hmm. it's nothing. It's nothing in comparison yes. to the capital and mm -hmm. caravan mm -hmm. of Armenia where it's busy, where people are going out at night. Yes. So mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? So I would say Yerevan and another parts of Armenia are completely different. <laughs> There's something in the air. Bless you. <laughs> uh, so Yerevan is uh, and another regions of Armenia are completely different. Everything is in Yerevan. So Yerevan is very busy, but here is very very quiet, as you see. Uh, most people are doing uh, gardening, farming here. This is the only way to live in. Uh, these areas in villages, bless you again. And a lot of flowers <laughs> yeah, <laughs> blossoming yeah, yeah. up there. Uh, now is right season of the flowers everywhere. So uh, I would say it's not uh, too easy to live in villages because so if you are not doing farming or uh, gardening, so it's... There is not a lot to do except for farming and gardening. Yes, there is to nothing say. to do, I would say. <laughs> I would say except. So... People from here are quite lucky because uh, they have a uh, work like this, so uh, it's already became a little bit busy. And they so you mean like because of tourism, like yeah, work like this, tourism. and you were you mm -hmm. pointing inside to the laundry ladies because uh -huh. they have something to work, right? Yes, yes, and for me as well. Mm -hmm. If if not, I have uh, I, uh, to move Yerevan to find an, uh, a job because. So you say because you are managing the hotel, you can stay in the region. And yes, if not, yes, you would have uh -huh. had the urge maybe to earn money and to go to a busier area. Of course. Uh, if uh, uh, you, you want to go forward, uh, you need to go to Yerevan because in regions or you, you have to build something like this. Of course, it uh, should be very nice to have a place like this, but it's, it's extremely uh, difficult to To build something How on. easy is it then to find a woman that you can relate with? Because I assume as being here, you, you meet like um, various kind of different people. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I've spoken this morning to Russian, to mm -hmm. the LA lady with her family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me, myself, I'm German. So mm -hmm. how is it for you then? Um, what kind of woman are you looking for to marry? Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> how old are you again? I'm 25. Oh, you're so young. <laughs> What is the general age to marry here? Uh, general, I think um, it's different also f f in Yerevan and in regions. In Yerevan, uh, usually people when they are on, uh, they they have a work, they they can afford to ha rent a house. Then they decided to get married. But here is a, like traditional, when you get married, girl is coming to live with uh, uh, boys' parent husband's parent and um, so uh, I, I don't know for me it's it's maybe it's not the right time and I didn't find the right person yet what is the average age for a woman here in the remote area of Armenia to get married I think 20 22 like this mm -hmm. and You at the age of 25 how is it is your mom and maybe even your grandma and your aunt and your friends they're not saying hey you're 25 what's going saying, on here <laughs> it's, uh, they, uh, there are a lot of people that think that it's already oh. late <laughs> for me to get married <laughs> you know they say get married as soon as possible after two years you will not get married anymore mm -hmm. so yeah I don't think so so as I uh, work with a very different kind of persons it's um, very very much more developed people so i met 
different people. So I like take when you say like uh, very much developed, from, you mean like people from abroad bringing other ideas? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Sorry, I couldn't explain what I wanted to say. Yes, uh, another opinions, uh, uh, another uh, people. So uh, from everyone, you can get something for you to learn and to use for your life. So I think uh, everything is goes quite well for me. <laughs> I'm local, I'm from this region, I born in a small village and I could manage to uh, finish university. What did you study? Uh, finance. You studied finance? Yes, I did. <laughs> and where did you study? Uh, Armenian Economic University. And where? In this region. So we have a branch in the uh, center of our region, Yeregnadzor. Mm -hmm. I studied there. So there was no need for you to go to Cherevan, to busy capital? Uh, yes, th there is no need, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, options, there are no any other options. So there is only one university in this region. Mm -hmm. So, which is... Question official. that comes to my mind. As mm -hmm. you are very open-minded here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So how is it? Like, can you still... And mm -hmm. I'm asking that because I think it's important to understand... How easy is it for you to relate then to your home community, to people that do not get in touch with foreigners? Mm -hmm. Because as you said yourself, foreigners bring strange ideas, weird yes. ideas, crazy ideas, different energy. Yes. They bring you the mm -hmm. world. One can mm -hmm. say they bring you into this valley here, a new mm -hmm. world, a new perspective. So how is it when you go home to your family, to your mm -hmm. mother, who's maybe <laughs> not having that, yes, who's not yes, exposed I, to I this? I understand what you mean. So okay, so I will uh, I will tell you with an example. Uh, for example, uh, people I saw a lot of people, and also it's uh, I saw in Yerevan. Now uh, people already started doing like this. People living together, young couples living together, and then decided to get married or not to have a children or not. But in regions, nowhere you can see this that people first living together and understanding are they for each other or not can they live their life together uh, so and because of this there are a lot of divorces in regions so people getting married without uh, no, knowing each other they just holding each other hands that's it and they getting married so they ended up uh, divorcing and sometimes having children And uh, I think this is something that we can get from from Europe, for example. I know a lot of couples, uh, young couples. I have a friends who are not married but living together to know each other better, to to understand. Uh, Tell me, how live. is it? Because you said like they are holding hands, and then mm -hmm. suddenly you are married. Yeah. So I assume. Can I speak out the word sex? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sex before marriage is is this possible in general? Uh, in general, not in in regions. Uh, it's very traditional. It's so very you marry a virgin? Yes, uh, mostly, mostly. Ah, <laughs> mostly. and the men are they virgin as well? Uh, no. <laughs> And um, <laughs> does sound a bit it's familiar. But changing. It's from changing other? in Yerevan right now. In Yerevan, I can see a lot of things because. Uh, and people who are around showing this that, uh, for example, this man is well educated, well developed, and he's living with uh, his girlfriend for a while, and then they decided to get married, and they taking this because they know this person is educated, developed, and very smart. So they can get this. I think it will change only we need a But still in the region until now it is a very classical model which you can find mm -hmm. everywhere not only because Armenia is a Christian country, right? It's one yes. of the core mm -hmm. uh it 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 had even the first uh, Christianity lift, yes, right? It claims yes. to be the first country that lived Christianity. In the world, yeah, in we, the world. which accept officially Christianity. But honestly, I've seen those models um in other cultures and in other religions as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily linked to Christianity. Mm -hmm. But still, getting back to the point, you say in general here, you do not have any sexual exchange before you get married. And this is the big yes. surprise, the gift that comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then suddenly you find out during marriage it's not working. Question for you, is it easy to get divorced here? I mean, is it really easy? Because my research showed mm -hmm. that it's still difficult. It's like women are ashamed of... 
asking for yes, divorce. Yes, because the uh, because second time is is like the second time when they trying to get married. It's uh, uh, completely different from the first time because it's difficult for women especially for so men to re get well. married the se if you get a divorce it's mm -hmm. difficult to find another man who's marrying you right yes That's what you yes okay. so uh, usually usually uh, men are preferring uh, girls that uh, were not married are virgin as you said yeah it's uh, preferring but uh, also in big towns i saw s some uh, developing in yeah. this it's it's changing of course of course mm -hmm. and um this um, i am in this side because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if she's divorced or virgin or not she, uh, there are much more bigger values than it is and it's nothing uh, 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 there is nothing with value i mean uh, so the, the most most important part they are missing uh, is she or he they is, are they love each other can they live together can they um question for you uh -huh. okay <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been in love with a woman uh yes i have i have i had <laughs> Right now, it's a bit complicated. I'm in a uh, relationship with which just began, and maybe 20 days ago. Hopefully, everything will <laughs> goes well. And so, for example, I'm an example. This girl is uh, seven years older than I am. Yeah, and. Yeah, there is she uh has been engaged not married but engaged so i uh, i don't find anything uh, in this so and your I'm family still, would be fine when you marry her uh they i i'm try i tried and still trying to make them in that opinion that it doesn't matter the age everything so sorry uh, um, they all are waiting for me. Can oh. we uh, continue after? Of course. Uh, I'm going to uh, check out for the little yeah, dogs yeah, in the yeah, meantime. <laughs> I still have not left the region whose name I am not yet familiar with. Where are we right now in Gore? Yeregis. 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 The reason is, I've arrived yesterday at quite, la quite late and since then I was surrounded by really nice people and I'm really, since I've been awake, coming from one chat to the next one. So Gore, <laughs> while I was trying to get back into my room, mm -hmm. you were asking me, oh, you're a journalist. And I said, oh, let's speak. Mm -hmm. And now we are sitting here and we are at a table. You said um, you have your colleague with you. Yeah, I know. And then there is a little child. May I, might I ask, is it yours? Yeah, it's my child. And then it is most probably your wife next to you. Absolutely. What are their names? So it's Datavik, my wife, Sarah, my daughter, and Angela, my colleague, and Rafi is her husband. Hello, all together. <laughs> I've seen you sitting here during breakfast already. Yeah. Yeah. And your cause is Teach for Armenia, which mm -hmm. is an NGO. Actually, I have already heard about it, mm -hmm. and I would like to dig in. What is your NGO doing? So it's a foundation, it's an educational foundation, and uh, we operate in our educational sector. We work for public schools in Armenia, in Armenia involving Artsakh. Um, basically, there is a huge teacher shortage, and uh, many kids, thousands of kids, are uh, behind the educational system, so they are not, uh, they don't have an opportunity to uh, to get knowledge, to get their education, and our mission is to provide uh, excellent education to all kids across Armenia and Artsakh. So what we do, uh, we recruit uh, top talents. So let me just jump in there. You said there is a shortage of teacher. How many teacher do you miss? So according to official statistics, uh, in, there are 700 teacher shortage because of which this subject is not taught at this this subject is not taught at schools the total teacher shortage would be certainly much more but in 700 teacher shortage cases those subjects kids are not getting education in those subjects and those are like maths physics languages etc 
So, and who is responsible for the for the lack of educational tr training here in Armenia? Is well, it like because is the focus on another subject here in Armenia, or would you say it's a lack of money, or is it a lack of understanding the importance about education? So, I think it's a complex issue. It's not one layer. There are many layers in that. Yeah. Uh, there, there are many layers in that. So you can say. Uh, it's uh, because the understanding of the role of the teacher so there is like this transformation from the Soviet area to now uh, if there is of course a shortage of uh, investment money so the salaries are not that high mm -hmm. uh, how much is the teacher earning here? so I think for the full time they might be earning around 100k AMD which is uh, slightly less than 200 euros and it's per month? per month yeah 200 euros per month it's uh, in case they have a uh, full capacity uh, uh, so it's at least like if it's a full time because they have to teach 22 hours uh, per week mm -hmm. uh, in order to be full c considered as full time and how much money i mean of course 200 euro doesn't sound so much mm -hmm. particularly when you come from germany yep, but absolutely. how much money is required when you do not live in cherwan in the capital but mm -hmm. for example here in the region so, well, uh, because for Teach for Armenia participants were providing additional financial aid, we did calculations, uh, we actually commissioned a research to see like how much money would one person need to live uh, in certain areas uh, outside Yerevan, and that was varying from 250 to 350 euros uh, per month. For uh, one person or for, for a whole family? Person. No, for one, for one person. Uh, so based on that, uh, we besides the teacher salary that they get from the school, we are providing a financial aid to our participants, uh, which means uh, we, we try to guarantee them that they will have at least 11 hours, which is half half uh, half time, and so they will earn kind of 40,000 AMD or 50,000 AMD, kind of 100. And in addition to that, we provide around 300 euros. Uh, for so you try to support, just to get it right, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you say like when you work here as a full-time teacher, which means like giving uh, lessons for mm -hmm. 22 hours a Absolutely. week, but then you have the, the work because my dad used to be a, a mm -hmm. teacher as well. You go home and you have to correct mm -hmm. work uh, from the students, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot make your living here in Armenia because you need more money than what you earn currently. And this is where you come into place? Uh, I would I would frame it differently. Mm -hmm. So I would say there is a huge shortage of mm -hmm. te uh, uh, teachers. There is a, a inequality in the mm -hmm. educational system. And when Teach for Armenia comes, we try to recruit top talents. Mm -hmm. We try to train them and allocate in the most underserved communities. So it's not that we're filling the gap of teachers, okay. but we're sourcing the pipeline. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're filling the pipeline with top talents with a vision that more and more people will be in the system, would care about the system, and eventually with the ground knowledge, with the training and with the teacher experience, wherever they would be after the two years program, they would uh, impact the decision making in educational sector in order to make it more accessible and more equal for everyone across Armenia. And if I, but still don't, uh, maybe I, I understood it wrong, but still you need to make the sector of becoming a teacher also being more attractive, right? Because Absolutely. I would ask myself, why should I become a teacher when I cannot even support myself financially here? So, um, there are different reasons why people join our program. So if we talk about graduates, uh, they, it's, it's a great opportunity for them to start their careers because as you know, it's in Germany or anywhere mm -hmm. else as well. Like uh, a lot of employers, they are interested in having more experienced people. And this is in our case, you know, we are ready to receive um, graduates, to, uh, graduates to our program. They get an experience, they get a lot of knowledge because we provide them with individual mentorship, we provide them with different content, etc., etc. Uh, so they, in two years, they get huge experience. So this is one layer. Mm -hmm. Another layer is, of course, patriotism. I mean, uh, people know, people see what means uh, having uh, lack of education. Mm -hmm. uh, people see what it means when you have communities uh, basically d d d uh, talents draining from those communities because there are lack, uh, there is a lack of opportunities. And of course, like I think uh, schools uh, schools have been always prioritized in our families. And if you, uh, if the school is not uh, that uh, strong, and uh, people start to move to another community, so that goes the urbanization, and you are losing 
uh, the opportunities in those communities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the NGO was founded by? The NGO, the foundation was founded by Larissa Hovanisian. So she she's from Armenia. Uh, she I can't believe it. This is why I know the NGO. I've written to her two weeks ago. To Larissa? Now that you dropped the email, uh, wow. the, her name, I'm sorry, I remind me of the email wow. that we exchanged. That's cool. Yes, because we were talking about, about Artsakh. Mm -hmm. uh, and she told me a bit about her engagement and how she's active. Yeah, so she, I'm so sorry. No but again, there was so much information this morning. And I'm just like, again, from one conversation to the next. Yes, I do remember. Gorgeous. Yeah. How many people are active here in Armenia working for uh, Teach for Armenia? So if we count the staff, I think we are more than 60, 65, including uh, contractors and part-timers. Being we, here in Armenia crowd yeah, or being all uh, around I mean, the world? I'm, I'm, all, I'm only saying the staff, so mm -hmm. working for Teach for Armenia, because the participants, the teacher leaders are not considered the staff. And mm -hmm. we have more than, I think we have around 120 teacher leaders and similar numbers, so around more than 120 alumni who already did Teach for Armenia. Mm -hmm. And then now they are working for, with UNICEF, they are working for Teach for Armenia, they are working for government, etc. Et so they are fueling the pipeline of educational wow. system. This is such a small world, I can't believe it. Yeah. Thank you so much that you Thanks. stopped by and said, hey, who are you? <laughs> so Larissa, I mean, we had just a couple of exchanges by email. She's a fascinating personality. I could see her, her amazing, yeah. focus and her energy behind. And she is the woman who founded also this. Um, you say it's a foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, who is financing the foundation? Is it coming from the private sector? Is it even the government who is supporting her efforts? Where do you get your money from? So the, uh, the foundation is being uh, funded mostly by donations and it includes uh, diaspora and Armenians and Armenians from here, or, or, no, individuals and groups. So they are uh, like uh, basically... Diaspora means like for those... Armenians who are women. living uh, outside of Armenia, either they moved from the independent period or they are uh, there after the genocide in 1915, etc. Yeah. And the people that you are recruiting for your program, where do you get them from? Are they also part of the foreigners living abroad, but who are still Armenians and who want to come back and give something back to the country? Absolutely. You are absolutely right. So we recruit. So there, I would say there are three different groups that we recruit. We recruit graduates. Uh, we recruit people who have more experience. We call them young professionals. And we also recruit from diaspora. So we usually have different trips across across uh, across the world and uh, presenting our program so basically what you need to have you need to have a bachelor's degree and you need to have some knowledge of Armenian and the teaching degree is not required because during the program you will get it and that's so, good for the listeners yeah. hinking <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah and so if you are in if you are an Armenian wherever you are and if you are interested in contributing to the development of educational system or communities in Armenia I would certainly recommend to go to teach for Armenia and check What, what there is so I personally also uh, when I was in Germany when I was studying in Germany I think Teach for Armenia was founded then and I was saying like if Teach for Armenia would be founded like three months earlier I would never go to the studies and I would just join there so <laughs> I can see and feel your enthusiasm when it comes to education here in Armenia I would have uh, a question for you women and men to what extent are they equally educated yet um, maybe you even have some figures Uh, I would, uh, from figure viewpoint, I would say uh, when we talk about participants involving into our program, uh, the mostly there are females who are joining our program. As teachers, As right? teachers And right. when it comes to those who receive the educational training to go to school, is it you would say like equal, equal, or can you still see which would be something that is totally reasonable when you have a look on the history, the development, mm -hmm. and it's not only then applicable for, for Armenia, would you see there is still a gap, an educational gap somehow? Well, school system, uh, attending school is mandatory for every child in Armenia. And I think uh, overall in, in that area, so attending school, edu getting school education, uh, I would say it's quite equal. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, there is another thing that uh, there might be stereotypes of different professions. So for instance, uh, teachers specialization can be more uh, feminized if I w if that would be the right term uh, in English and maybe some other professions would be more like uh, for males as considered so this kind of stereotypes of course exist uh, which have different layers behind but like overall I would say like if you look even into our 
uh, employment sector, you would see that uh, many uh, many areas uh, is that like f- females are very active and they are very very much in- in- engaged into the into the system of into the work uh, labor force. Last question for you. You have also a child. You're a young dad. <laughs> what would be your key? What would you be your ideal key takeaway as a student? If you would put yourself back when you went to school, what was the one thing you would have learned to learn from or at school? What I learned or what I would like to learn? Last one. I think uh, the biggest thing is uh, putting no limits and having critical uh, critical thinking. So kind of knowing how to learn, knowing how to gain information, how to gain ed- uh, uh, whether it's an education, skills, mindset, etc., etc. So learning to learn, I think, is the key skill. And if you have uh, the understanding that there is always a room to improve there is always a room to learn and you know how to do that you know how to approach information no matter it's in google or textbook uh i think that's the key and the rest can be built on it that's beautiful thank you so much it's so spontaneous and please say hello to larissa sure maybe she remember me i don't know but thank you so much and uh, let's exchange our contact details yeah thank you thanks a lot so spontaneous This is, this is a really incredible old car and I've seen them so often here in Armenia. They seem to be like really old, yes. <laughs> like decades old, right? Uh, I guess they are more, more than 50 years old cars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they are left here from Soviet Union times. So people have them. Not all of them work, but sometimes... Maybe they use some uh, details from them. Yeah, like it's a it's a huge. How to describe it? It's a huge truck. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's I don't know. It's 12 meters long and it's I don't know three and a half meters high. Yeah. And you can see the machine is not even in there. Yeah. And it looks like a vehicle from another century. Yes. It looks like coming out from an old movie. You know. That's it. A yeah, Soviet Union movie. And this crown, we're just in a little village. Yeah. You can hear the birds singing. There are even two more of those old cars and. Having a look at them, you would say, oh, you need to throw them away. What to do with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're rusty. There's yeah. even wood at the back to keep yeah. things on. But uh, the wheels are plaid. What do people usually do with those old cars? They just uh, it, they just had it before. And uh, even it doesn't work right now, but they still keep it because maybe one day somebody would like to buy it. Maybe or, or someday maybe they, maybe they would like to... Uh, make it work so so who's buying houses here a lot of people uh, from around the maybe we can say world lots of armenians mostly buy houses lands here uh, because of the views because of the climate and everything else but it looks very empty Yes, because uh, in most houses, people don't live for all the time. They come only uh, in summer for Mm -hmm. maybe one week, maybe for two weeks. That's why people mostly don't live here. Those people who are living here, what do they do for work? Mostly uh, agriculture works, like animals, so on, so on. Mostly that is, yeah. And lot of people. What were your parents doing? My parents are not living here. My parents are li- living in the city, not far from here. <laughs> that it is a very uh, quick way of driving. Like you, yeah. you find your way and you, you push finding your way. How long does it take here to get the driver license in Armenia? Oh, I cannot. I cannot say that. Do you need to go for your school or do you? Yes, you you have to go to school, but I don't know for how long time and. How easy you can get the license and uh, that uh, all the things learn all that. Do you remember how long it took you? Yeah, it, I, I guess it was two weeks maybe. Tough road below us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everywhere tough roads here. Yes.